an age of call-outs, culture wars, and perfect facades, people can be afraid to express how they really feel. So we brought together seven strangers, protected their identities, and asked them all seven burning audience questions. What will be revealed when we take the mask off? If your answer is yes, you'll turn your light on. F the police. I know that there are quote unquote good cops, but if you are working in an entire force with individuals who are essentially mostly racist and where police come from, um, the history of it with being the sheriffs of slaves and tracking down slaves, using dogs or whatever they're using, it's just wearing that badge. It's just, you're never really here for us and we never feel safe for that reason. So f them. <laughs> The only reason why I can't fully say that, like he just said, there are some good out there and personally having a cousin who is a police officer, but everything else behind that and all of the other people who introduce, who bring the racist and pretty much the mentality to it. Yeah, no, it's them for sure. All right, we're gonna have everyone join the conversation. I don't really feel anything towards this statement because I haven't had any encounters with police, like, ever. Why do you have to have a personal experience? Why can't you just look at the damage that has been done? It's like different because I, I, feel, I feel like I feel the weight of my ancestors in certain situations and other areas of my life than I do with the police. Okay, this is not me taking away from the black community in general because police are always targeting us, but I find it interesting that only the black men had agreed with that. Um, yeah, I, I'm like on the fence with it because I know that there are black cops out there that are truly trying to protect and serve. And I really don't know what I would do if we completely destroyed the police system. I would be scared because it's like, OK, well, I don't believe that is the the solution, but yes, black men have that main encounter with the police. And sometimes it's annoying because it's like, okay, is this the only cause that y'all care about is police brutality? But um, yeah, I just, it's halfway with me. I think feelings do become more intense though once you have an experience. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. No, definitely. And so like, you know, seeing, seeing situations where my dad got pulled over, got questioned, got harassed for no reason, then to experience my situation down in Texas, I, mean, I had bought guns for the first time, registered them, followed everything to the T, and then still get pressed up against the side of my car like I did something wrong when yeah. I did it the exact way that y'all said I had to do it. That experience right there, my, my dad's situation started it, and then my situation is what finalized it. Are Asians racist towards you? I have a neighbor who is very, um, privileged. Um, she's married to a white man. She's Asian. And I feel like that comes a lot nowadays in America. I feel like Asian women are trying to be the white woman of America. And they're not realizing that they're also in marginalized communities just as we are. Especially Asians that are born into American culture. Um, it seems like they're just pretty much white and they don't have any empathy for other minorities. I have had negative interactions with um, like Asian people or like other people because I'm black and because colorism is a thing, but I've also had like positive interactions. So I feel like yeah, Asian is just a very generalized term. I know it happens, of course, but me personally, I have not experienced racism from the Asian community. I do totally agree with the idea of colorism because it does seem like the darker you are, the quote, uglier you are in any ethnicity, which does suck. I think the American influence is big, and that's on anybody that comes, no matter where you come from, what background, when you get to America, you spend a couple years here, you start to see how things are done, whether they're right or wrong, you see how things are done, how black people are treated, how white people are treated. So a little bit after I left the military, I spent a couple years in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and South Korea. These places were places where I was accepted more so than back home. It was shocking to me to not be followed around in stores in South Korea. It was shocking to me to not be treated or even looked at uh, the same way I would be walking down the street in certain places here. I have dated outside my race. 
in my past dating history, I feel like, you know, I tasted the rainbow pretty much. Like, <laughs> I've dated East Asian men, I've dated Hispanic men. It's, it's different, you know? Like, you're never gonna find somebody outside of your race that's gonna 100% understand you, understand your struggle, understand your family, why you do things the way that you do. When I'm dating them, I know it's gonna be different, and I feel that's kind of like why I'm entertaining the fact of even doing that. I don't think that I would necessarily date a white person. I just feel like there's a disconnect. But as long as like they're willing to like, you know, have those conversations with me and understand like my blackness, I want to have those conversations with them and I don't I don't mind what their race is. I think for me it's just all about my comfort level with you and how much I can relate and like he said, um, I think a white woman would be like at the bottom of the totem pole just because <laughs> we don't have that much to connect on, but I'm not opposed to it. I would just kind of rather work with something that I know there's a lot of compa compatibility there. I'm not opposed to dating outside my race, but in terms of marriage, I would love to marry a black man. Okay. Yeah. Think about our ancestors. Like, they're probably turning in our grave. They're, they're, they're grave. <laughs> like, they're like, what are you doing? Like, we've done so much, and you want to be with yeah. this white person or this non-black person? I've never <laughs> dated outside of my race, but maybe I should because a lot of black men tend to go to non-black women. Because they can control them. <laughs> um, yes, they and because... they're easier. And because they have European features, softer mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. They like the Kim Kardashian-looking woman. Exotic. You know, you want the black black woman aesthetic, but you need the European features. So maybe I should date outside of my race, but I personally, like you said, I want to build with a black man. I want to have black children. I, th that's what I want to do. But with this generation of black men, I don't know yeah. if it's possible. Me having sex with a white man, it's just, it's the master aspect. It's mm -hmm. the buck breaking history. If you know what buck breaking is, it's, mm -hmm all of that combined and then the idea of most times, even in heterosexual relationships, it's usually a fetish a fetish for the individual to be with you. It's either because you have a nice body or your skin is so dark and lovely or because you have, you know, that tool that they want, um, if y'all know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> yeah, in general, it's always something on your body that they want. And if it's genuinely true love, that can happen. But for the most part, I just think interracial dating is disgusting. I've felt oppressed by my own community. I actually sometimes feel very uncomfortable in spaces full of black people. If you're not desirable as a black woman, if you're not desirable to men, then you tend to get overlooked. I have to work my ass off for things that I want. Black men, cis hetero black men specifically, they oppress all of us and it sucks because I want to be with a black man, but it's like I have to try to appeal to my oppressor. Um, I'm gay and I'm also black. Um, so within the black community, I feel like, again, when we go to these protests, when we go out to these clubs or parties and I'm in heterosexual spaces, I feel like, oh, it's yeah, he's black, but like he's gay, so we can't really mess with him. Like he can't really be in our space. And it's like, how is this your space that you claimed over a sexuality and a sexual preference, essentially, rather than us being the same race? Yeah, of course. Like you were saying, like if, if you're in the LGBTQ community, it's intersectionality. So, I, I people are more cool with me if they if I'm passing and they see me as like a cis black guy versus um, if if they know I'm trans. In terms of my experience, I feel like maybe black people were gatekeeping opportunities or like trying to be super stingy or trying to be the token black person and not really, they kind of like bully other black people to make them be like, you don't deserve to be in my space. Like this is my zone. This is the area that I'm working in. And it's kind of like they're trying to keep other black people from being successful. Like I feel like I've seen that a lot. And I feel like that's happened to me before too. When I was living in Mississippi, I was around predominantly black people. I didn't feel any different. But now that I'm back here in California and I'm around, you know, other races, like, well, I can see why this could be considered colorist or I can see how in this situation, maybe I'm feeling, you know, like I'm not as worthy as these other people. But I just couldn't use the word oppressed really to describe how my experiences have went. Have you ever wished you weren't black?
like, I want to say record straight, I love myself now. Like, I love being a black woman. But like for so long, because of also family members feeding into the whole idea of like, oh, you know, you're so pretty uh, because you're lighter. For so long as a child, I associated being black as being something that was a bad thing because I saw how people that were darker than me were treated. And I was just like, oh, I, I don't want to be this anymore. But I mean, with a lot of love and compassion and hardcore teaching, I was like, you know, being black is honestly the best thing ever. We lit. <laughs> I just feel like we're lit and I get where that comes from. That's a part of colorism. And that happens a lot in our community. And I just feel like if we all just accepted our blackness more, we would just be great. Like when I was younger, I moved to like a town that was like predominantly like white and Hispanic. I, I never felt like specifically like, oh, I wish I wasn't black, but I did like look at other people and say, I wish I had hair like them. I wish I looked more like them. Like yeah. I, I love being the race that I am, but having 4C hair and having darker knuckles, darker kneecaps, especially in elementary school and middle school, mm -hmm. getting through that was really hard. Now at this age, I'm learning to accept all parts of me, but I still battle with it like every day. There were times where I maybe wish that I wasn't black American, that maybe I wish I was an African woman or Brazilian, because I feel like black Americans, like we kind of were disconnected from our African roots and our heritage. And that part kind of hurts because it's like, we don't really have much to call our own besides like Ebonics or AAVE, but Black American culture has ultimately set the tone for a lot of modern day pop culture too, so I'm proud of that part as well. I would raise my kids differently than my parents raised me. If you haven't had an experience with whether sexual abuse or some type of violence in your home, you are lucky in the black community because it happens to so many of us. And I feel like with me experiencing that growing up, I would never beat my child. I don't want to have to feel like beating my child is a resource or a source of like them respecting me. Yes. I want them to know about mental health and take their mental health actual like serious mm -hmm. because we don't take it serious in the black community at all. Oh, really? I love that you mentioned that specifically about mental health because it's something you can't talk about in our mm -hmm. community sometimes. It's like, well, what's wrong with you? Like, are you crazy? I'm gonna, I'm gonna whoop your tail. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be acting this way. I give you everything. You have no reason to be depressed. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna reciprocate that onto my children. And I don't want them to feel like if they're feeling depressed, if they're feeling overwhelmed, I don't want them to think they can't come to me and talk about it. My parents, they didn't have that opportunity to communicate with their yes. parents because yeah. they were raised in a completely different yeah. generation. Okay. Yeah. So now, like, I see my mom was, you know, raising me this way because that's what she's used to. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to cut it off with my line. Our kids are probably going to be like, yeah, I ain't doing that when I have my kids. Like, each generation gets wiser and they learn something else or have resources to something else. So. I, I just want to always highlight the good things that my parents did. I've already acknowledged them and addressed the bad things with them, but now I can forgive and let it go and yeah. just highlight what they did do right and kind of mix that with my own. I can't be honest about who I am. Being black, like if I'm in a white space, I'm like constantly like, how am I coming off? Um, but a lot of times for me, it's like, you know, in terms of being trans also, like, how am I walking? How am I talking? How am I being received? Do these people, are they speaking at me or looking at me like they're comfortable with me? And it's just pretty tiring sometimes when I'm around other people and I'm constantly checking myself. Since we're in the age of like cancel culture, it's just really easy. I feel like if you, if you, even if you want to be honest, it's like sometimes you can because you have like a fear of getting cancer or a fear of people like lashing out on you. And I feel like in certain senses like that, I'm not, I can't be completely honest in terms of like my views on certain things just because of like how people are going to react. It takes a lot for a person to be themselves and fully 
own their identity, no matter who you are or what you are. So living in that, I've learned to own that. And I just, I'm always blunt. I'm always me. You see what you see is what you get. If you got a problem, you can leave. So yeah. It's exhausting to try to defend yourself all the time about who you are. But at the end of the day, I sleep better at night knowing that I'm just me.